gnarlier things that happened is we ran out of gas in Alaska in the middle of nowhere at two o'clock in the morning. And get this, the people that stopped, the first people that stopped to give us gas, their parents were like, oh my God, our daughters love you. We have your merch. They've been watching you for years. Welcome to your our first podcast with a dog. And we got our star guest today, Bailey Weinstein, and we got Lexi Weinstein over here on the side. Welcome the back, guys, rest. to Mike for Success for another episode that we're getting in with one of my good friends, Justin Bishop. I'm so glad to be here, man. Thanks for having me. Dude, welcome, welcome, welcome. And before we start, let's go over the sponsors because I keep saying these completely wrong every single time. Uh, our main sponsor, My Whistle Box, also another side job I'm doing on the side. But if you want to check out My Whistle Box, it's a new way to send private information. Oh yeah, the little whistle for you. New way to send private information in a secured way. Stop using email and start using My Whistle Box because there are people in the world who will be tagging into your email when private information is sent. And let me tell you, you do not want those private emails to be uh, confiscated by someone that you don't know. <laughs> that is that is exactly true. And we kind of got a fake sponsor. Uh, the boys have a new bikini line called Cupid Swimwear. Cupid Swim, guys. I saw these bikinis. Mm. Mm. Can't wait to see them on some people. Unfortunately, yeah, no, they're just they, in the bags. The boys <laughs> created a great product. They are authentic. Oh, did they make that? Yeah, yeah, they oh, did. They awesome. did. Ladies, go check it out. Um, they're not paying me to say this. It's just a true friend to shout out your friend's products that are going to be launched. But today we got... Justin Bishop, a content creator, a world traveler now, <laughs> a water polo player, a surfer, a content extravagant. Like, you literally do everything, dude. Everything. I would say I would say I do get my hands on a little bit of everything. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good life that we live, I think. <laughs> that, it is awesome. The guy is from SoCal, California. Also joined me at USC. I feel like everyone I bring on is Fight a, on, guys. a USC <laughs> alum, part of the Ivan Young Academy, which is... You're part of the first class, right? I was in the second cohort to go through, so not the first, but second class to go through the Ivy and Young Academy, which was, let me tell you, quite the experience. And I don't think I'd ever say this, but I kind of miss school with that program. <laughs> That's awesome. We are 100% going to get into that, which is going to be really yeah, cool to learn no, about for all the for kids it. out there that don't know what that program is. little tidbit of brand new information. Jimmy Ivy and Dr. Dre are starting a high school based off that school now. So they're actually uh, opening a new high school in uh, downtown LA to kind of promote the whole just Ivy and Young vibe. It's exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. And I didn't know that. So if you guys want to check that out, go check it out wherever Justin tells you to go <laughs> check it out because I know nothing about that. I honestly don't really know, but I know it happened. LA Times did an article on it. The Academy Instagram page I know has it, I mean, at Ivy mean Young Academy. So you can go look on those pages. Um, I actually make a lot of the content for those pages as well. That's awesome. <laughs> and before we get into it, let's go over a little tips. This guy has played water polo. He's done surfing. He's your SoCal beach bum, I like to say. He's a content... I mean, he's just amazing content. I've learned half my stuff from Justin. Thank you. He's traveled around the world with Sam and Colby, if you know them, the YouTube duo. He's been to Coachella and filmed at Coachella in the Do Lab. We're going to get into all these amazing things, and he's going to teach you guys how to get into content creation. Maybe you need to go to USC or college or a junior college. Maybe you don't have to go to any of that. Maybe you can live the dream and start content creation through your phone. Yeah, so. you've got a phone in front of you guys. That's where everybody starts, let me tell you. Yeah, a lot better now than when I started off. Uh, that, that is one hundred percent true. But let's get into it. Tell let's everyone about it. yourself, Justin. Where you're from? Absolutely. Tell us a little bit of your background. Um, so I was. Uh, my name is Justin Bishop. Born and raised in Southern California in Orange County. Um, spent most of my life there. Went to college at USC with this fine gentleman right here. Um, graduated in 2019 from the Ivy and Young Academy. Um, that's a pretty unique major, as I'm sure you know, but you guys might not know. The major was started by uh, music moguls Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre, and the two of them wanted to create a major that was fully cross-disciplinary and uh, built for entrepreneurs. And like in today's day and age, a lot of people do more than one thing. For me, I'm a marketer, a content creator, uh, a designer, an engineer, and all of those things are what they kind of taught in the program. My diploma officially says arts, technology, and the business of innovation. Um, so it's a little bit of a mouthful, but that small program of just the 21, 22 of us kind of got to go through that and learn what entrepreneurship really is at the core from some of the best entrepreneurs I think that this uh, generation's ever been able to see. But at USC, I was on the uh, the water polo team, played that for a couple years. We actually uh, 
went to the national championships of Florida, which was super fun and kind of got to travel for that as well. But since uh, graduating college, I've started my own marketing and content creation production business and uh, kind of have been boy, all over the place. Coachella being one of the big ones. Sam and Colby, my most recent clients. I uh, I want to get some dogs. If you guys know any dog companies or clients that want to shoot some puppies, boy, I want to get on that. Bailey, <laughs> Bailey's a show. Hello, Look Bailey. She, she already 11 knows. 11-year-old little cutie. And I, I start to talk and she's like, I need to take back the show. This is my show. And for you guys wondering, we are at Club Dub or Casa de Raiden, uh, thanks to Jerry Weinstein, who is also on this show, who is a director of the Lakers, does sports production, and also a industry I'm also in. Um, go check him out. He, I think, is three episodes back. And then nice. to update on the last episode with Max Heidegger, professional basketball player playing overseas, plays for Tel Aviv Maccabi and Herzliya. He can teach you all about getting overseas and playing and what the experience was playing in Israel and now he's probably going to awesome. go for the G League or the Summer League for the NBA so hopefully boy. that boy very nice yeah and another update for another guest we had Tara Davis on a lot earlier and congrats to Hunter and Tara who are both track athletes they have officially made it on the USA track and field national yeah, Olympic team yeah they did we got some Olympians on the show guys so, go back and watch that it's a good episode it's, it's, it's amazing to see people grow and that's what we're all about and Justin's <laughs> Another one. Let's see. Five years, this guy's going to be... Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> he's going to be the next big one, even though he's already big. But <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah. Let's get into it, Justin. So you started off in playing sports, and then you got into production. Yeah. And for me knowing you for a long time, maybe the last four years, five years, however long it's been, you're amazing. <laughs> Everything you do between um, Premiere Pro to After Effects to all your, you know, computers all lined up <laughs> you literally do everything and between real estate and content creation for celebrities and all these things you've done everything how did you get into this how did you get started who was the person that inspired you to get into production yeah so i've believe it or not i've actually been doing production for like a decade now not maybe on the the level that i'm doing now um like as professionally but 10 years ago i uh, i picked up a gopro camera from uh, Costco and started taking photos of surf because I was really into surf and um, at the time being a swimmer and water polo player I was really comfortable in the ocean and I kind of thought that I was in positions that not a lot of people could be in um, whether that be like actually surfing or taking pictures of other people surfing um, let alone being in California is an awesome opportunity to have that but you know the the camera aspect is something that really drew me into that so I started because of uh, Clark Little believe it or not he's a photographer out of Hawaii super great um, he's kind of the icon of surf photography, and because of that, um, that got me into the, the GoPro surf photography, and then once I started doing that, people kind of realized, oh, Justin takes photos, like, can you take photos of my event or whatever, um, and I just kind of eventually had my parents ask me, both of them are real estate agents, um, to film one of their houses, and that was kind of the kickoff to what I didn't know was going to be the, the long start to my career, so I... I filmed their house, put it together, made it real nice, did the whole whole edit. And um, after that, I realized, wow, that was actually something I enjoyed doing. Um, it's something I could see myself doing for a really long time, something that actually provides a lot of value for other people. And I think in today's day and age, providing the value is, is just as important as the actual content itself. Um, moving on past that, I actually used the whole real estate content business to pitch to get into the Ivan Young Academy. Um, basically kind of told them what I did and it was uh, actually what I did as my senior project um, continuing on into college um, my senior year basically in the Academy you're a task to start with a business um, basically start a business go from scratch and see what we can do you've got mentors throughout the entire year you've got people that can kind of get you places that you wouldn't be able to if you started on your own and so having that whole year um, build up to what I'm doing now is really convenient um, and real estate was actually the main part of that. So that's kind of where it went. And I, I got an internship with Dulab my junior year, um, which is a company that throws a festival called Lightning in a Bottle, um, one of the best events that I think I've ever attended. And they also have a stage at Coachella called the Dulab Stage. Um, if you've ever been there, it's a, it's a pretty good stage. That is kind of the environment and the sphere and the company that actually got me into believing that being a creative was an opportunity and you could actually make a living and a career out of it. So being presented with that opportunity before I graduated was a huge, huge push for me. And I mean, 
a lot of people, as you say, like know me for being the Coachella guy because that was my thing while I was in school as I, um, I was working those events. And, and for me at the time, it was really, really cool. And it still is an awesome opportunity. And now that music is coming back, dude, I'm so stoked to have music like be a thing again. I've missed live events. And so I'm excited to get back to that. And I have a lot of stuff ramping back up. Uh, I'm going to be in Vegas next month shooting a concert and then EDC later this year again for Vegas as well. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a the good moral track. Of the, the moral of the story, uh, Justin's living the dream. And <laughs> all the young kids listening, you guys are probably like, man, this guy is doing everything right now. But it all started from the very beginning. Yeah. In the very so beginning of learning. and It is a long road. I may, like people, that is something that people don't really see is like, I've been doing it for 10 years and 10 years is a long time to be doing anything. That's like almost half my life at this point. So having patience is like so important for anything that you're doing, whether it be podcast or creating or working a corporate job. If you're patient, you'll get where you want to be. I am nowhere near where I want to be, but I think I, I think I'm on the way. <laughs> and coming from that, I think the most important is everyone probably wants to know how to get started. How, how did you learn Premiere Pro? How did you learn After Effects? Were you working on that from the beginning? What made you uh, use certain softwares? What is the ground broken that you got yourself into? YouTube? Were you on YouTube looking That's up exactly how to do things? Uh, YouTube, I, I'll come out here in public say it. YouTube's the best university and education tool on the planet. Um, mainly because one, it's free, and two, there's endless support. So I, I didn't really know what the heck I was doing when I first started, um, but I did actually start in Premiere Pro <laughs> at the time did a little bit of illegal downloading because it was a really expensive program. Don't worry, it's all official now. But <laughs> getting into that was like kind of learning and it was learning a program and learning an experience and learning how to go from start to finish and tell a story that's more than just more than just video and like cut sorry <laughs> <laughs> you're good um, but having that whole experience was really cool because it's something that I've always done on the side for fun and then in college kind of realized oh this is a career like opportunity where I can actually take it and do more than just make fun videos for myself so um, are you a Adobe Premiere user yes I'm a I'm a very avid Adobe user a Premiere After Effects Lightroom Photoshop Bridge Illustrator the whole nine yards, even audition comes in there sometimes. When so you if you're audio. a kid sitting at home right now listening to this and you, they probably want to know, how do I get better? I've actually had family members call me up and say, how do you learn? Did you go to a school? Did you take a course? Yeah. I mean, me and you are the same. I mean, I learned off of my friends. I think your friends are your best friends when learning new things. And I also think YouTube. What was the hardest thing learning right out of the bat? Was it Premiere, After Effects? I mean, Lightroom is Lightroom. If you understand colors. Mm -hmm. A little bit easier to understand but premiere and after effects are a total beast of themselves yeah, those are, they're definitely like you have to start with a problem if you if you try to go into those programs you get way too overwhelmed because they're super just they're made for experts and there's so many different options so many different things you can do and so getting into it initially is very scary um, what I recommend for a lot of people now is when I get DMs or anything is I'll, I'll just recommend start on your phone because it's kind of expensive to get into it and if you have a phone you can edit now on your phone like that that actually blows my mind that you can edit and shoot an entire video on your phone now when, you know, not even 10 years ago, you had to have super duper nice equipment. And now this thing is shooting as, as nice a quality. Um, for people who have Macs, iMovie is an amazing thing to get into initially because it's free and it's on the program. Um, PCs is a little bit of an issue because there's no free program. So if you have a PC, unfortunately, you might have to just do trials of <laughs> softwares because, you know, isn't, you isn't DaVinci free? It could be. I, I think DaVinci is free. I think that's the first uh, production of okay. Good video to know. editing that's free. Check it out. If it's free, definitely look at DaVinci. That's a great program. Um, I'm, I'm a sucker. I'm locked into Adobe. I've been in there for too long, and I don't think I'm ever leaving. Once you go in, you won't come out. <laughs> it, is, it, is a black, it is a black hole for sure, but you know they, they all work really well, and we had professional school classes well, teaching. For the so. kids that are using, uh, what's the normal Apple one? It's uh, iMovie. No, after... Or, Final Cut Pro. Final Cut, is like Final the, Cut the, the Pro. Up, yeah. For the kids using Final Cut Pro, should they keep using that, or do you feel yeah, from absolutely. being in this world, you know, Premiere Pro is the way to professionally get better and better? And when you go on to jobs, that's what people are using. Yeah, I think for me, the couple agencies that I have had jobs at, they do um, have Premiere as their primary. Like when I worked at Live Nation, and then a couple agencies down in Orange County, they they want you to be editing in Premiere because that's the software that they have. However, if you're editing for yourself, use what works. Like use the program that you're comfortable with, use the program that you're confident and you know how to do things faster because the most frustrating thing in editing and producing is getting stuck. And if you don't know how to 
solve the problem in the program that you're trying to solve, you want to give up. <laughs> and so if you're comfortable in Final Cut, then you can totally stay with that. When you go and apply for jobs, though, there there are sometimes different requirements, as, as any job may ask. But you can change uh, keyboard shortcuts in Premiere Pro to Final Cut, so it actually works exactly the same. So you don't really have to learn too much new stuff. The keyboard shortcuts are at least similar, but um, I've never done that back and forth. I've been on Premiere for my entire life. <laughs> I've been on Premiere since I got into SC. <laughs> Premiere Pro, they got you, give you that uh, cloud. Dude, that's, uh, that's the thing about student student uh, software. They give it to you while you're a student and hook you, and then they've got you for the rest of your life. It's a great business model, guys. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm stuck. I'm, I'm stuck on it. I, I don't think and I'm changing. And it works. It, like, it works great. I'm able to do what I need. I can go. I can put Photoshop files into After Effects and animate them. Like That's literally what my last contract with Doolab was, was animating Photoshop files that I had created, and it was like a full-blown job. So being able to kind of have that opportunity where you know the program and the skills and you're able to present. Like I presented that idea to them, and they're like, that's an awesome idea. So once you're in the programs and like learn them and learn the ins and outs, that's where you get to really be creative and kind of – you can make your vision a reality because you're not trying to learn the program. And if you've got the program learned, then relearning a software is not going to be as hard because the mechanics and everything are similar, but having the basis of like just how to do everything is so important for, for efficiency. Right. And then let's talk about budget. Because budget is, I mean, my biggest problem. Yeah, and for as, college is mine, kids, as is mine. College kids, young kids, not all of us are gifted with families that have millions of dollars and you can buy, you know, Christmas, Hanukkah, all the, you know, birthday party gifts every single year. But... Equipment today is expensive. I yeah. actually just bought my first drone, the Ooh, Mavic Air 2S. Dude, that's a good um, one. For $1,000 $1, or 1200 <laughs> for to fly more, but I do recommend that. I just crashed my FPV low-key. Oh. <laughs> but speaking of that, like the FPV drone, that's like, what, $1,500? Yeah, somewhere like that. I typically get the fly more combos just because I know I want to have the batteries and all of that. I think it came out to like 2100 with the batteries and insurance because I knew I was going to crash it. Unfortunately, that's a, a given with these things. Right. <laughs> and if you, that's rule number one, always get the drone insurance because it's you, you, you don't need it until you need it. And when you do, you really wish you do. <laughs> Listen to Justin, because this guy is... Uh, Learned it the hard way. <laughs> crashed, crashed drones multiple times, apparently. <laughs> yeah, a couple times. They, they do too, They do pre-sin, pretty decently well staying alive, um, except when they're going like 80 miles an hour into a tree. So. Right. But speaking <laughs> of budget, I mean, I've started off on... I forgot what Canon camera I have, but I got the ZV-1, a small little vlogging camera that fits for these podcasts. We're not filming on it right now, but that was an investment for myself. I do music production. I probably took... Five years to get the full studio ready. Oh, yeah. It's expensive. That's but, the hardest part. But kids listening, does it really matter on quality of your cameras, your lenses, and all that stuff? Nah. Like, as I was saying earlier, like, I, I'm not even kidding when I say this. I take my phone and use this for professional reasons when I don't have a camera. I hope my clients aren't working and watching, but... <laughs> the Like, you can shoot a 4K video on a phone right now and edit and upload in 4K. Most YouTubers aren't even upload or YouTubers aren't even uploading at 4K because it's a little difficult to work with, but the fact that you can shoot that quality is amazing. Like, Apple only shoots their commercials on iPhones. And you watch that, and it's a Super Bowl-esque type quality commercial because the production and the knowledge is there. Like, all of these lights, if we had all of these lights and filmed it with the phone, it would look very similar because it's the raw equipment. Um, having the nice equipment, obviously, like this camera you guys are watching on right now is an A7S III. Um, it's a very nice camera, in my opinion, and it, it, it works incredibly well. It's got great dynamic range, which basically means your highlights and shadows are closer and in post, you can pull them and make it look even poppier, and you have a lot more control. Um, it's also really better, really good at a low light. This thing actually sees better than my eyes. Um, when I was filming with Sam and Colby in Seychelles, I, I literally was using this as a night vision camera because it was seeing better than me. Um, so those are like the the advantages, but it also took me seven years to get to these cameras. So I started with a Canon 70D. That was my first camera. Um, it was an awesome camera, had a flip out screen and it was touch. And so I, it was like all techie and brand new stuff at the time. I still have that camera and a, a, a water housing, the, the water housing that I shot the photos in. Yeah. So I still have that whole setup. Um, but that was my first camera. And then my second was a Sony a6500. The third was this, uh, Sony a7 III. And now I've got the a7S III. So that's kind of the progression of cameras, but gear. And as you guys can see, he started small and got bigger. So it, it is a progress of time. And that's like, I'll say it probably plenty of times is patience being patient and knowing that like everyone everyone's on their own path and climbing that ladder i'm just climbing the ladder of 
my own thing instead of a corporate ladder. As long as you got a memory card, a camera, and a music software, or not music software, production software to produce your videos, yeah. you're all set. That's all you need. Yeah, I mean, CapCut on your phone. I actually use that very consistently because I shoot stuff on my phone, as I was saying, and then I'll edit on my phone and post it straight out from there because it's so much easier than shooting it with a battery, making sure it's charged, the SD card's empty, plugging the SD card in, editing it, and then shooting it on an export and then getting it to your phone. It's just so many more steps than doing it straight to your phone because everything goes to social media nowadays anyways. Right. And that's where everyone's attention is. So if you're trying to grab attention, just get on social media and start. I mean, I struggle with that. I've been trying to start a YouTube channel for God knows how many years. Just starting. I still don't understand why you don't. <laughs> well, the last six the last six months of this year is that's happening. This is a public decoration that is happening. Justin's I'm very starting. good about being on other people's YouTube channels and not himself. <laughs> he also has a problem with shooting so much content. He has hard drives and terabytes of... Uh, you want to take a so guess? So much footage. How much, uh, how much footage I have? 50 I, terabytes. Oh, dude, you're close. It's 38 terabytes. And if people don't know what a terabyte is, it's a lot. It's I a have thousand a, gigabytes. So your phone, I have a 256 gigabyte phone because it's a big one. That is five. I can't do that. I'm, I, I create, guys. I don't do math. That's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a lot bigger than your average storage. Um, my laptop, I think it's uh, 62, 62 storages of my laptop. <laughs> I got all my film stuff and all my music stuff on my two terabyte drive, and I still, I think I'm at 1.6 terabytes, so. Speaking of hard drives, double backup. Because when you lose your stuff, <laughs> oh, oh man, you do not want to lose your footage. How about, how about you explain that a little bit? Explain the, the backup drives, the hard yeah, drives, because sure. I think so, people overlook that. Oh, that's something that I think a lot of people getting into the game like don't even think about, and until it happens to you, you don't realize how big of a, oh, I'm fucked. Sorry for that. Uh, basically, you, the way you want to think about it is if, if you lose your backpack or your hard drive, you're losing all of that work. And the work itself is more valuable mon monetarily, at least most of the time, than this, the things they're stealing. And if you don't have it backed up, you're losing. Like, I lost all of Coachella the first time I went. Uh, my drive failed the weekend after because I was just, I don't know what happened. I don't know if I was running it hard or I dropped it or something, but I lost two weekends of like the coolest content creation thing I'd ever done as a newbie. And uh, I had to go and have it shipped out and, and like repaired and all of that. And it cost me like more than I got paid for the job, but because I needed the footage, like it was something that you had to do. So how much did that cost? It was like a, I think it was like an eight or $900 repair did you get everything i got everything back for, okay. for very very fortunately um but so, so what do you recommend so you, what, what are the orange the lasik the lasik uh oh, lacy <laughs> that's the called? one that failed <laughs> that's all, what, what is a hard drive that you actually recommend for people to get so in? i have a lot now i pretty much exclusively try to buy solid states um just because they're so much faster um basically hard drives in the old days they're actual discs and they would spin and your your computer would read information kind of like a record player um, nowadays, solid states are just like flash drives, but way bigger. And so like the write speed of my Samsung T7, I think is like 1100 megabytes per second. And a That's hard fast. drive back in the day used to be like 250. So I love watching technology like exponentially get stronger and faster, especially with camera gear. Cause we're shooting on newer cameras. I need newer stuff to keep up with it. Like the speeds that it writes and reads at are, are awesome. But for bigger stuff, um, I have, what do I have? It's a, I think it's a Seagate or a Western Digital, like 10 terabytes. So I have a couple 10 terabyte drives that I back everything up to and that just sits in the office because you have the double backups so that I have them in two different locations. God forbid the house burned down or something like that. I still have the work um, in two different locations, but that's kind of the learned it from the, <laughs> from failing type of thing. And speaking of backup drives, um, there's also backup clouds. I, I, yes. Any recommendations? Shout out to USC. <laughs> I low-key have nine terabytes backed up on USC's Google Drive because it's unlimited storage. <laughs> if you can get an enterprise account, Google Drive, that's where I go. But I know Dropbox is also another really big one. We transfer if you're doing individual transfers is super good. And if you're sending... Um, Really, really confidential stuff. My whistle box. Exactly. There you go. My whistle box. That's where the pornos get sent. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Where am I? 
It knows OnlyFans people. <laughs> so welcome back as we... Or welcome, s- technically. <laughs> welcome. We, we, we kind of... Uh, it was either me that didn't hit the record button on this main camera. Technical difficulties. We'll just go. Or the camera just did not record. But we got on the mini camera. As you can see, the view just changed. So ta-da. Welcome we, to the main cam. Welcome to 2021. We're upgrading <laughs> halfway through a show. Which is, I don't really know where we left off. I think which there's is, a first for everything, but we're kind of starting, just starting over, yeah. Yeah, if you haven't we don't seen, know where you uh, guys are. You got, f- you got Bailey just uh, left the frame, and you got Lexi right here, who's going to cut up against Aww. me for support, because we're all sad. We just did yeah, an just hour, hour and ten minutes of podcast and that only got, yeah. we did not get footage on. Well, maybe 25 minutes. We got minutes like of, maybe half hour. Yeah. That was it. So we yeah. kind of got a... So we're trying to figure out how to piece it back together. It'll be a fun puzzle for you to figure out. (laughs) Yeah, so we got to talk about, what, four things? Uh, Yeah, we got a couple topics. Ivan Young Academy, Sam and Colby, Ricky Carmichael. uh, What else? Um, Oh, yeah, Do Lab. So we're going to refresh that, which you guys are probably like, what is going on? (laughs) But we we already talked about it once. It's happened. It's fresh in my memory. It'll be even more vivid this time, probably. All the fresh (laughs) jibber-jabber that happened, uh, we got our first take of. So now we're going to re-say it in probably a shorter way instead of jabbing on for an hour or so. I jab on. That's that's the thing. If you don't know who I am, I'm Michael Raiden, and, <laughs> and this I'm is Justin Bishop. And this is a uh, take two, which is gonna be on bloopers, probably. Yeah, which most is, definitely. We'll figure it out. Which is funny, <laughs> but we're we're gonna get into the Ivan Young. Absolutely, dude. The for best the second out time there. tonight. Yeah. So I mean, I'll just I'll start it like as we kind of were doing it for the first time, or no, nah, it's, it's okay. This okay. is this, this is kind of funny. People right. are gonna laugh well, at this. We're gonna go through it again then. So the uh, the USC Ivan and Young Academy, man, that's like the best school I think that the nation has to offer. I know it's a little pretentious for me to say, but I think that's because it's uh, it's not a typical school. It's it's built for entrepreneurs. It's built for doers. It's built for creators. Um, the diploma that I have from that academy says arts, technology, and the business of innovation. So. The, uh, the official diploma itself is a mouthful, but it's a really cross-disciplinary program built for you know entrepreneurs to become designers, creators, um, engineers, business, and being able to have the base skill level of like all of those employees and being able to communicate is something that Jimmy and Dre actually found when they got bought out by Apple. Um, they went over to Apple and they found that their designers couldn't talk to their the engineers or the business people and there was a huge communication barrier just because they didn't speak the language. And so the program was kind of created to create an employee one that could talk to every department and be kind of super versatile but also create an entrepreneur that can kind of start from the get-go and do everything on their own and then manage everybody when they uh, have a team. You know, puppies are coming to join us. <laughs> Puppy wants some action on the academy. You want some finger? Little Bailey. Yeah. <laughs> but so, how, how about you tell everyone what the academy was like? What was a day in the life of yeah. the academy? And how'd you, how'd you start your day and how'd you end yeah. your day? Oh, so, I mean, the academy was different every single day. We had different projects every single week and different things going on all the time. Like, Freshman year, I built an Iron Man suit out of cardboard um, and pitched a pet rock as a project. So you have quite a bit of diversity, but you know there's this brand new building that USC just opened for the academy, which I unfortunately didn't get to partake in. But it's incredible because it's got laser cutters, 3D printers, um, CNC machines, like everything you could ever need to create is in that building, and the uh, the opportunities and possibilities to create, you know. You know, oh, my headphone broke. I need to reprint this piece. They can do that in a couple hours. And so having that ability in our spaces to problem solve instantly really is something that I miss greatly because, you know, you can solve anything instantly. But being able to kind of have a have an idea and be able to execute it and not have any problems creating it um, was really, really effective just because I like to tinker and do things with my hands. But classes were so diverse. We, we took classes in the business class, the arts or the, the arts school um, communications. So we had Marshall, Annenberg, Viterbi, and the Academy, which was all, I think that was all of them, right? <laughs> that, I, and there's more, Keck. Oh yeah, no, at USC for the, for the Academy. But yeah, <laughs> USC's got quite a different schools. Check them out, fight on, always. Um, but the first two years of the program are basically building your basic core skills of kind of a modern day employee is what they see in their eyes. So we took coding classes, a little business classes, some intro Photoshop and Premiere and like creative programs, basically built the groundwork to the floor of everything in the future. Um, and then after two years, we actually got to pick, you know, um, what we what we really wanted to do. So they were called, uh, 
what did we, what did we call them? I want to get this right. It um, emphasis is. <laughs> so my emphasis, um, you had the opportunity to create your own. Um, I actually created my own and did a little bit of design, engineering, and business and communications. So I, I was interested in all of that. Um, I, I got to do like Marshall and Annenberg and Roski, which were the art, um, business and communications, which are all things I'm doing now in the content and marketing side. So being able to kind of take classes in different schools was a really great opportunity because not everybody gets to do that at USC. And so kind of having different teachers, different programs, different schools to ask questions, pull knowledge and kind of just have different points of views of what the world is was really cool to have, you know, as a part of my college experience. What, are, what about Premiere Pro and all the After Effects and oh. everything? I, I know we talked about that. Maybe I'll put this back in if we saved it. I have no clue. But let's talk about Premiere Pro yeah. and the fundamentals of a good producer in terms of content creation. Oh, man. Um, I think the fundamentals of a good producer on content creation for what I do on like the AdSense size is providing value to your end user, whether that be, you know, users us scrolling through social media and that um, value is making your brand cool or education um, is a really great way to do that. I think having that, um, oh, my brain just slipped, dude, it's getting late. <laughs> <laughs> having having those different ways to kind of express it and, and go through and really find out what works for you. And that's kind of what's important is just finding what works for you um, and then doubling down on that. I think what a lot of people do is they 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 have a preconception of what they should be doing as a producer or as a creator. Um, but I think for me, I've just found what works really well for me, and and it's to the point where clients are starting to come to me because they've realized that's the type of style they want. And finding that style and hunkering in and like making that your the Justin Bishop style, the, the Mike for Success style, having that branding and the voice behind it is kind of the producing and the providing value that I am trying to bring that's different than a full-blown produced, you know, movie in LA and whatnot. Uh, that's great advice <laughs> and something to look forward to for a lot of kids on how to get started and be themselves and learn, learn on YouTube guys. I think oh, YouTube is, we touched on that earlier, but yeah, YouTube is the greatest. I, I take that back. The Academy is great, but YouTube, I think, I think it's got it, got the leg up. Cause I learned everything from YouTube, even from college. YouTube <laughs> university is the way to go. And I say this in every show, YouTube university is where you learn and where you grow and school is where you tune everything and uh, polish it, Yeah, which is, which is great. Yeah. But we're going to get into the main polish, which is the do lab hey. and work in Coachella for the second time tonight. We're talking about this <laughs> and the do lab, which people don't know is at Coachella. It is, um, has its own tent. They do EDM and a bunch of, uh, alternative EDM DJ. They do, they do all the EDMs, the house techno, you know, just like everything that you can think of in uh, EDM song. That's, that's the type of artist that they bring. But so. Justin had the pleasure of interning there once yeah. and then working again. Yeah. Um, he's going to explain his experience for the second time. <laughs> he's going to explain his experience and what went on working at Coachella in the do lab and how I got that opportunity being from the Academy and getting the chance to work beside camera people and producing his own stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Do lab and Coachella and lightning in a bottle. Those, uh, I like to, I like to think of Coachella the first time I went as a creator, like the start to my creative career and, and kind of the kickoff to, you know, there's more than just sitting in an office as a, as a career. Um, I got an internship with the company do lab when I was a junior, uh, in college. And I actually didn't want to apply to it because it was unpaid and I was like, I already have a job that's paying me. Granted, it was a work study job checking out cameras in the advanced photo lab. Um, I don't need this. I, I can make more money sitting here doing that. Um, but I had a, I had a wise friend come in and tell me that, you know, this, that's not what internships are for. They're for experience and building skills and knowledge and a network. And, um, you know, got me to apply for the position. And, and within a week I was in their office, uh, interviewing for an editing position and I'd only edited like stuff for fun my entire life. And, um, once I was there, I, I had the goal to go to Coachella with the company because I had only been to Coachella once before. Uh, if you've ever been, the do lab stage is one of the cooler stages, biasly saying this, but one of the cooler stages at Coachella, they've got screens, they've got lights, we've got water cannons that keep you cool in the summer, 110 degree weather. Um, there's also a tap that flows all weekend long backstage, which is pretty convenient for uh, 
your creative uses, if you know what I mean. If you had to, <laughs> if you had to explain the cool behind the scenes of the Do Lab, and actually working at Coachella, because yes, you were at the Do Lab, yeah. but working at Coachella is a whole nother experience on opportunities you can get yourself into behind stage. Yeah. <laughs> Any cool experiences you had working at Coachella, meeting artists, being like, wow, I'm actually behind the scenes where I wouldn't be before. There was this one time where I got a production pass um, by accident and a production pass is all access. Like owners of companies and people can't even get production passes. It was, uh, I managed to talk my way into it at, at Will Call because <laughs> I had seen it the weekend before. It was weekend two, the first weekend I'd ever wear Coachella. And I happened to be lucky that Will Call Wi-Fi was down. So there was there was no way to like check anything, no way to double confirm. I just walked up and was like, this is what I have. I'm here for my ticket and photo. And they were like, oh, like our thing is down. We don't have you on the list. What type of <laughs> what type of wristband is it? And I'm like, oh, it's a production band. And I just like, she was like, oh, so Jaden or whoever's going to be, I didn't even remember the name, but they were like, oh, this person's going to be working with you. And I'm like, yeah, they're great. You know, fake it till you make it, guys. Um, I got to go to some pretty cool places. I got... Um, basically backstage access everywhere for that. But the backstage at Doolab is where like the real cool action is because all the artists come to hang out there because they've got couches like this, they've got lights, we've got drinks, they've got food. And having that opportunity to literally sit in a lounge with artists like Fisher and RL Grime and just like drink with them and hang out and learn and just talk to them like a normal human being is an experience that was really cool to just, you know, be in. And it was my first like job outside of school that wasn't, uh, Actually, yeah, that, I mean, that was my first job, I guess, if you want to consider something that's not a lifeguard. But um, that whole behind the scenes is, like, way different than when you see it in the front. There's so much production that goes on. Um, like, we, were, I'm personally there for days before the festival starts. Uh, our production crew for the actual tents, they're, like, two weeks, and they're working every single day to make it happen. And then within two days of the event, it's a completely empty place. It's it's crazy being there and like seeing it and being on the forefront, but being able to work and kind of have that opportunity open my eyes really to, holy cow, like I don't have to sit in an office. I can be creative. I can pick up a camera and do this. It may not be as consistent as every single day, but I know that over time, you know, if you put the patience in and the time, it'll, it'll grow to be a lot more. Right. And yeah, one of my one of my good friends, Rick from sports production that I work with, he actually is an engineer for Coachella. And oh, nice. For people that don't know work in production, if you're part of, you know, uh, do lab and the K rock tent and all these other things, that's a way to get in. There's also the production production, what you see on YouTube TV. That's what my crew do in sports. They also do that. So live entertainment. And apparently it's the most ridiculously hard thing to get. I hopefully one day will be able to to do this, but he's told me stories about you get the production pass. You get to go anywhere behind, behind the scenes. Oh, there goes the dogs. They're gonna, uh oh, they're, they're attacking. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I mean, we have everything going on tonight. We do indeed. We hey, do little indeed. doggies, whoop, whoop, whoop. Come down, they're, they're your friends. Lexi. Bailey. <laughs> but wow, that's that's great. So yeah. how about you? Uh, you've worked with a ton of great people and Decent a ton amount. of big celebrities and uh, in the motocross world and all over sports and entertainment. Ricky Carmichael is a big one that you worked Boy. with. Yeah. Uh, you got a ton of cool stories. He's a great guy I've heard. And let us know. What was it like producing oh, content for dude, Ricky Carmichael? It was super cool. We we got to go to his house and like spent the whole, like the entire week with him. Um, the entire premise behind the project was he he owns po part ownership in a in a bike cleaning company um, or like a soap essentially. And uh, the company was giving a giveaway, and basically they were going to go to his house and spend the day with him, go to his racing track, see where he trains all his new athletes, and we were going there to grace create the uh, the promo video for it and we got to spend the entire week basically living this experience we got to go to the track ride his atvs ride his bikes watch him ride watch all the athletes that they train like soar 30 40 feet in the air flying drones around them um, and that was like my first production job straight out of school as a, as like a freelance content creator if you want to go with that and so oh yeah <laughs> we got a nice big old moon over there it's too bad you guys can't see that fat ass <laughs> Nice going, to Ori. <laughs> we got friends in the house over here, which just got back and probably just realized that 
they're all lonely. Why are we apart. still filming over an hour? And yeah. they are going to find out that our camera died. We're redoing this. So it is, yes. <laughs> Unfortunate circumstances, but we're making the best of it. I'm still having fun. <laughs> um, Ricky Carmichael, yes. So we're we're out there in Florida, like filming it at his farm, and I'm on the back of an ATV with my camera, going 40 miles an hour, tracking him. Um, got to go to his house and have a barbecue, and like this was all part of the production, and that was another one of those first things outside of school and outside of a typical corporate job that I realized, like, holy cow, this is actually like a real thing. And I think every time that I do something that I'm like, oh my God, this actually happens. Every time I'm just like, this is actually like a thing. And I still am in disbelief that we're able to do like what we do and it's like let alone get paid for it. Um, and having like Ricky Carmichael, who's the goat of super motocross and like won so many championships that he's literally got an entire room in his house covered with um, magazine covers of him winning is like the most down to earth, humble dude. And I think I learned a lot from that is because even if you are the greatest, you're still a human being. And like being around Coachella and all these people from a very early on age, I think changes you just because you realize everybody is a person. And if you treat everybody the way that you want to be treated and you have empathy and are super kind to everybody, like they'll reciprocate. And especially if they're successful people, you want those type of people to <laughs> reciprocate because they know they know what to do with life. They're just, they're doing well. <laughs> right. What and what about flying drones? Because flying <laughs> drones for Ricky Carmichael was a thing you had to do. It was, yeah. The old FPV drones, which oh, I heard man. you did crash the, the OG FPV, FPV drone. drones. Yeah, I've crashed the new one and the old one. The old one still works. I just can't fly it because it's so complicated to charge. But um, I did have a drone go down there. You know, if you don't have a drone go down on a shoot, were you really trying that hard? <laughs> Sometimes you got a very bend, bad motto. That's sometimes not a you got to bend I it say. like Beckham. You just yeah, got to fit the hole, and hopefully the drone gets through it. And most likely, it's a lot of times it does yeah. not. It just, I was basically I was tracking Ricky, you know, on his bike, going full full speed, and then went full speed into his forest that was behind the house. But um, luckily, it survived. It was just one hell of a climb to get to. It was like a good 45, 50 feet up, and it took me a solid 45 minutes to an hour. <laughs> and then I had to climb down with one hand on the drone, only one hand on the tree. <laughs> so, you know, climbing skills come in real handy if you ever go drone flying because you will lose it. It's, you not have any, a, it's not an if, it's when. Do you have any tips on drones, what type of drones to get for Ooh. the common creator? Oh, there's a ton of drones out there, but I highly recommend the DJI system. Um, I've actually been flying drones longer than I've been driving cars, if you can believe that. Um, back in the day when DJI had their phantoms and you had to put the GoPro on it and turn it on to time-lapse mode and just hope that you got the shot. Now there's so many different time types. Like the one that you got, the Air 2S is a really, really good drone. I think that's on the higher end. The the, uh, uh, the Air, is it the Mavic Mini or the Air? The, the Mini, Air. The there's one that's like three or 400 bucks. It's super cheap. Mini is 500. The Air 2, I think is at 800 now. The Air 2S is at 1,000. The Mavic 2 Pro up. is at, I think, 1,500 just by itself. And apparently yeah, there's right. <laughs> a new Mavic Air, probably three coming out soon. Um, that's the one we've all been waiting for. Am I That's, gonna I'm gonna go three drones this year? <laughs> uh, and then there's FPV. I forgot about that one. FPV oh, is uh, what? That's a 1, whole different 1200. game. Thirteen hundred, twelve hundred. FPV is literally like driving a Maserati sports car in the sky, it, it, like ninety miles an hour. <laughs> I don't know why. Why this should not be a consumer product. And then, I, I know how to fly drones, and I don't know how to fly that thing. And oh my! And then you also got the Phantom series, which is. The big OGs, drones, the which OGs. I don't recommend if you are a content creator because it cannot fit in your backpack. So please do not get that. Yeah, if you're a mobile content creator, those are not the best. Um, the Inspire is even worse for that, but those are like full cinematography drones. And we uh, we had one of those back in the day, but got rid of it because it was so big and so such a hassle. Um, the, the newer ones shoot just as nice quality footage, and you can uh, get it in your pocket. Right. Those things do not fit in your pocket. And the speaking inspires. of <laughs> putting things in your pocket and traveling and traveling and traveling, Justin had the chance to work with some of the two biggest YouTubers yeah. on YouTube, Sam and Colby, who had a series about haunted things and traveling and going into haunted mansions and the whole nine yards. But they decided to take a turn for a little bit, which yeah. will explain how that ended. But the 2525 <gasps> series, which Justin was able to be a part, he did find out that 
The producer in the team is USC alums also, which mm-hmm. is amazing. Mm-hmm. But Justin, let it, let us know about your experience with Sam and Colby. Yeah, uh, I know fans are going to be watching this and listening and want to know. <laughs> give us some detail about them. Are they real? Are they fake? Like, yeah, absolutely. Give us a whole nine yards, buddy. So I got a call in November from a friend that I I had met at USC, um, just like coincidentally, and she had basically started working for Sam and Colby as their assistant and. Um, called me up and was like hey i've got this really cool I- adventure like travel videography thing i remember you used to do that would you be interested in and i was like yeah like send me some more details first thing she sends me is youtubers and i literally my heart sunk i was like no don't make me work with youtubers to travel but i will say they did come through and prove me pretty wrong on that they're from kansas they're like some of the best southern boys i think i've ever met um and the things that i got to do on the 25 by 25 series is just literally next to none um, we got to do a, an installment of 25 like challenges and unique bucket list things to kind of overcome their fears and change change their lives and get people like you guys to get out and inspired and go do things. And so we got to go to crazy places from Alaska to Utah to Africa to Seychelles. And all of that was all to kind of create content. And, and I all was of it was during COVID, which they were tested oh, on the dude. daily. So don't oh, freak dude, out that about that. So, that was my nose is not the same, guys. <laughs> too many, too many things up your nose. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, the COVID definitely uh, took took me for a ride this last year with that. But it was, I mean, that was another thing is just logisticals of traveling during COVID and doing this all of this was super difficult. Um, but it gave us an opportunity to go to places that not a lot of people were because everybody was kind of at home and kind of seeing that contrast was really cool, um, especially in the off places like Alaska and uh, the Seychelles in East Africa. <laughs> but being able to kind of be their videographer and be behind the scenes and capture all of these really cool things was literally a kind of a dream of mine. And so being able to do that for the last six months has been an awesome, awesome experience. And, you know, I got a little bit of social growth from it, which was awesome. Seeing the uh, the fans, like I get to interact with a couple hundred people every day now, which is not anything I ever really fathomed myself doing. But now, like, there's people that actually ask me genuine questions and, you know, care. And it's really cool building a community and having a uh, Feel free to ask Justin questions, come. guys, and DM Yes, I, I think I mentioned it on the last take, but our camera failed. So I'm much better on a camera when I'm behind it, I swear. But if you guys have any questions, follow me and give me a DM at justinbishop.world. I would love to uh, start doing tutorials for everybody and kind of show everybody how to use a camera, what aperture and ISO and shutter speed and noise and everything that a, a creator should know in the long run. And I know a lot of people are getting into that. That's a different day and age we're living in. <laughs> so the question I think a lot of fans want to know is, what is it like traveling with Sam and Colby? Are they real? Dude, are they like fake? celebrities. Are they funny? Are there any funny moments that happen behind the scenes that you can leak out in terms <laughs> of... Uh, we are Maybe the boys <laughs> we, we stripped naked and jumped in something they weren't supposed to do. Like anything confidential that you're able to. We're definitely slip a up. lot, a lot funnier off camera, but that's because R-rated things aren't aren't YouTube friendly. <laughs> but um, I. What's the funniest story that's ever happened with Sam and Colby and yourself? Any bloopers? Oh man, well we're we're literally just goofballs because that's what does well on YouTube. So everything we do is pretty pretty funny. One of the like gnarlier things that happened is we ran out of gas in Alaska in the middle of nowhere at two o'clock in the morning. And get this, the people that stopped, the first people that stopped to give us gas, their parents were like, oh my God, our daughters love you. We have your merch. They've been watching you for years. It was crazy because Alaska, you think nobody freaking lives there, but the first people in the middle of the night were like kind of, talking and then realized they were youtubers and then realized that their daughter was a fan so like being around a a sphere of influence that i don't really necessarily know like i'm not a big youtube consumer as much as other people are but i have like the knowledge of it and seeing that was really cool just because you know communities are actually real i you hear a lot of creators talk about you know their community and having following and being supportive and all that and i've never really experienced that or seen that but every single place we went, no matter where, it was Alaska or Africa or Utah or Vegas, people would recognize them and us. And, like, it was really cool to see them react and, like, actually, you know, give care to them. That is one thing, though, I will say. If you guys come and people are filming and they're professional filmers, let us finish our jobs because we can't create for you if you're in front of us the entire time. <laughs> so any funny fan interactions that happened? Oh, dude, we were on the Salt Lakes in Utah 
and a fan managed to find us. We were literally in the middle of nowhere. Of the Salt Lakes. It's like miles like, of just Salt, Salt Lakes. Nothing. If you've ever seen it, it's it's actually nothingness. This fan drug her dad out of bed and <laughs> they would look for us for like three hours. And then they wouldn't. You guys were great, but I had to do my job and I couldn't talk to you the entire time, but I had to distract. <laughs> so that, what were you guys doing on the salt stands? We were learning to drift. Drifting cars was one of the uh, 25 by 25 videos. So what was the car you guys were in? Um, it was a red Miati on the salt flats. Um, we had rented, I think, a white 4Runner to get out there. But we, we had some locals, basically like a local drift squad came out and met us. And we kind of just bought them all tires and then just drifted the cars around on the salt flats. That's awesome. And I think, people, I think people want to know is, how do you... How do they get these things? How do they get these cool cars? How do you, how do Patience. you get all these experiences? Other than you, you having two million followers on YouTube and all the different channels, is that the reason, or is yeah, it the so connections a lot of, of the team? It's a little bit of both. So what they have is they actually have like a full blown USC producer, and he does a lot of this back end scheduling and communications and and logistical things. Um, but because brands want people to see themselves they would you know they there are so many different ways to get out there nowadays the value that they provide with those views is very high because they're guaranteed to get five million impressions and for a brand that's a lot of impressions if you put something on a tv you don't know how many you're guaranteed to get but views are views and so if you can provide value and basically build the brand with content and make it the awesome piece of company online um, that you're experiencing, then anyone can experience that well, anywhere in the world, really. And so that's kind of what's been really cool with the Sam and Colby package is taking that idea and that concept and going everywhere in the world and trying to create it and being a shareable experience for everybody. Um, there was a question at the beginning of that that I don't feel like I answered, did I? <laughs> I think you did. Okay. I, think, I think you answered everything. But we're going to get into the, the super serious part, the scariest part, um, something that happened that he's luckily to be here right now that happened with Sam and Colby, a scuba certified oh, Mr. Man. Justin Bishop and a water phenom that yeah. lives in the water with cameras and goes underwater. Something scary happened. Dude, we ran, we ran out of air a hundred feet down underwater and a hundred feet down. If you guys haven't ever been there, which I'm sure not many of you have, you can't see the surface of the water. Like, you you look up and it, you like you can't actually see the surface because there's just so much water and things between you. But anyways, we were uh, we were getting advanced certified to go scuba dive out of San Diego. There's a shipwreck that I'm blanking on the name of, but it's 100 feet down. And 100 feet down was a milestone that the producer Zach really wanted us to hit, which in my opinion wasn't necessary, Zach. But <laughs> <laughs> you know had to do it for the video. And um, so basically, Sam and Colby were getting. I've certified and advanced certified in under five days. I was also getting advanced certified, which, which doesn't happen, which, it, which doesn't happen, but you know, for the, for the vine, they're <laughs> for the content. You just got to do it. They became popular from vine. If you guys have ever uh, heard of that platform. Um, so that's how long they've been in the game. Patience. I talk about that patience, but we, we had to go down to hundred feet and do our, uh, like basically your brain doesn't work as well hundred feet down. So we did some math problems before we got in the water and did the math problems down at the bottom and timed it. And basically, you know, you see how different colors change because colors are different underwater when you go deeper. And, um, then Colby runs out of air a hundred feet down as we're going through these drills. And, um, we had kind of expected him to run out of air, but not as quickly as he did. So our instructor gave him uh, her secondary and they were sharing air and we started to go up. Um, he, he got stuck on the bottom of the floor though. And he, he's like kicking and we couldn't, like we were not raising. And while that was happening, my secondary octo gets pulled from my vest and the fifth diver on the group starts like stealing my air essentially. And um, that's when I, you knew things were going wrong. Yeah, I knew things were starting to go wrong then because we had 100 feet to go and a three minute stop to do it 60 feet and a three minute stop to do it 30 feet. And we didn't have six minutes of air for the two of us. We had enough air for one of us, but not for two of us. And so eventually, you know, we're, we're making our way up and we didn't get to do our safety stops. And we get to the surface and like we're all fine, but it like. It, it hit me personally like in the moment I was totally cool and fine and like relaxed and like okay we got to get this done but after when we hit the surface I was like oh my god that was like one of the gnarliest things I've ever almost 
not come back from. <laughs> and you said the what the very next day you got out of bed oh, and dude, completely just fell dude, down. Dude, I, so we woke up the next day and we 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 had to cancel our diving for that day because we didn't get to do our saving safety stops, which totally screwed the entire production because we had to push training back and dates and my schedule didn't work with it so it was a whole mess because of this and the next day i like got out of bed and i kid you not all stars and fell like knees onto the ground and that was really scary because i'd never had that happen especially after like a diving thing apparently it's normal after deep water diving just not as severe as it happened to me but um i'm here and i'm still moving (laughs) <laughs> so I think I'm okay, but it was it was a pretty gnarly couple of days to recover from that and then just also process what went on. Word of advice, mother's listening. Stop your kids <laughs> from doing this because uh, tragedy could happen. Yeah, I'm sorry, Mom. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but did you, did you feel working with Sam and Colby? I know things are going different now that they're going to be going back to uh, their normal stuff, but your experience working with them, how, how was oh, it? Dude, it was awesome. I think I think working with them is just really hammered in for me like i only want to work with people that are fun to work with and good to work with i uh, after the first day i felt like i was working with my best friends in the sense that like we just clicked we had the same vibe the same energy the same goal and kind of finding people to surround yourself with that share that share the same goal is really important because you're a culmination of the five people you hang out or the top five people you hang out with the most if you're hanging out with people that are doing what you want to do you're you're gonna eventually learn and develop skills and little tidbits that they've picked up over time and that was really awesome for me because it's something i've been trying to learn and just seeing it on a back end they're like such a well-oiled machine they've got a producer and an assistant they had editors and a videographer as well now they're doing their own video and filming and editing again because that's what their fans like providing the audience with the value they want unfortunately the fans didn't like the value of 25 by 25 but you know that's how it goes. We had an awesome six months, um, and I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I just I really hope we can do some stuff in the future together, too. <laughs> There's pl- plenty of people in this world that are super jealous of Justin and <laughs> traveling. I'm jealous of him of all the amazing trips he went on, and he doesn't have to pay a lick of dime to, to do this because the production team brings yeah, him on. Yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's a paid thing, too. So traveling <laughs> for free is everyone's dream. Um, it is, I, but it takes a long time to get there, and I, I hopefully – this caught in the other recording before um but patience is like one of the most important virtues i think that anybody can have because i've been doing this for 10 years and like this is the that was the first paid like the last six months is the realistically the first real paid travel work that i've had but i've had that in the back of my mind and that's been my brand and that's been what i wanting to do and believe it or not I was the first person Sam and Colby interviewed for, for the videographer position. And so they found my Instagram. Well, they didn't find my Instagram, but they saw my Instagram and just, you know, it was exactly what they were going for with their series. And that actually also got us to Seychelles for my seven week work trip that I just got back from. So the fact that I've had seven years of Instagram for those people to scroll through had a little bit to do. And then also just the community that I've very small community that I've built (laughs) over that time, um, you know, has, has starting to turn around things and actually provide work in the sense that, Oh, you take really cool videos and photos. We need that. And I have friends reaching out, but it took a really long time for people to like realize that's what I do. Right. And that's a perfect thing to transition into something. I ask every single one of my guests for the fans that are listening is if you had to fly back to your 10 year old self, 15 year old self, um, you know, you're 23, 24 now, 24 now. Uh, I'm 23 now, 23, 24. It's all the same past college in my if opinion. You had to go during your high school days, freshman year, and you had no clue you were doing this in the future. If you had to redo some things, would you keep on the same path? Would you older self tell you maybe I should have stuck to this and focused on just this yeah. and I'd be a lot better and progressed where I am right now. But any advice you'll give to that 12 year old 10 year old kid that is looking into getting into this yeah for sure i uh i think what i wish i had done with myself if i were going back is like actually stuck with it this is like what i'm doing now i have been doing for fun for a decade but it wasn't until three or four years ago that i really started to take it seriously in the sense that it's a career and i can make a living and actually do this um I wish that I had kind of realized that earlier, but I don't think I would have had I not gone gone to like USC and had my internship with Dulab and experienced Ricky Carmichael and doing all these like 
things that interested me at the time and they were my passions and I just followed them because it gave me energy. And I, I am a big believer of like surrounding yourself with energy and things that you really want to be a part of because you're going to be at your career for most of your life. And if you're not enjoying sitting at a desk, crunch numbers every day, then why even start? And I think that was what I realized junior year. And I kind of had the anticipation of like, I got to find something fun and something cool and something that drives me to get out of bed every day. And uh, I think I have found that and it's been really fun growing it and making it something that, you know, I'm really proud of because I, I, I consider it like a baby, you know, it's, it's something you put so much time and effort into, but starting and like putting the actual initial commitment and saying, this is what I'm going to do. We're going to do it and not being afraid. Um, I think being afraid was a big thing because nowadays it's very different, but you know, when we were going through high school, it was still go to corporate, get a job, like do the latter, all of that. Now that we're in the 21st century, 2021, there's so many different options to go and do anything. If I were 10 years old right now, my life would be amazing because I would be like creating full scale at 10 because the platform and the audiences and everything is there and that's what they want. So I think, I wish I had started earlier, but I'm, I'm so glad with the path that I went because I think it really hammered in everything. It also gave me the opportunity to go and like go to school because what I'm doing right now with the content creation side was all taught on YouTube, but the whole business and the networks, like I wouldn't have met you. I wouldn't have met half of my network. I wouldn't have got my job at Doolab. So college is an education for sure but it's also a network building. It's an experience builder. You're going to, you're going to have life lessons and things that you learn that are just as valuable as the actual education that you're getting in that system. And I think that, um, has all kind of led me to here, right. but stay persistent, stay, stay persistent, follow those passions, chase that energy and, you know, just be patient. Don't listen to other people. Cause you, uh, if you're, if bleh getting late <laughs> if you're confident in yourself and you carry yourself with confidence other people will believe that um and if you're not confident people will tell you that you're not confident sorry <laughs> you're good listen to people but don't listen to everything they say because a lot of people are out there to hurt you um if they're coming at you with malicious intent they're 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 hurting themselves and it is really hard and it is a lot easier said than done to react with empathy and kindness and be kind to everybody. But if you can be kind to everybody and empathetic and kind of show them that life is all about positivity because what you look for is what you attract and what you become. And if you're looking for positivity and good people to be around and good energy and chasing those passions, and I think that's the kind of career and life that I'm trying to build with this. Right, and I want to add one thing. I know I've had a lot of guests on that are from USC. We, we, we promote it, we love it, it's our school that we went to. I know it's the Trojan I, it, family, man. And I know it gets looked upon as the rich kid school and it has all the opportunities in the world through the celebrities. I didn't pay to get in. <laughs> Scholarship kid right here. <laughs> um, another kid, I went to junior college for two years and transferred in because it's super expensive. But in terms of that, you can do all this stuff at any single school. Yeah. There's a group of people. We were part of a group named Reach that uh, at USC that we formed that are all creative people. And we grew from each other. And I think I, most of our creative skills actually came from that group and came from the experiences we, yeah. we had at school. But every single school has that. Um, I know plenty of friends that went to schools all over the country, all over the world. Media is media. And you don't need to be at USC. You can be at any school. You don't even have to go to college to do this. Focus on YouTube. Focus on creating with friends. And you'll, you'll just make yourself grow. Um, I said that's um, advice I can give. Yeah. I know people put down SC. I love it. Fight on to UCLA. I know you said it was a great school also, <laughs> as much as we love it. But Justin, thank you for coming Dude, thank on. Thank you so much for having me. I hope we can do one soon where the cameras are uh, working for the whole thing. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. I mean, you guys are probably like, this is re really, really weird. Like, what are you guys talking about? Our camera turned off halfway through, as you know. And I think I think we'll, I think we hit everything. That one, that one uh, got the first half, so it'll be a two-shot two shot show. But, you know, I think it'll, it'll turn out. And for all you guys that aren't subscribed, please hit the like button, comment, subscribe on Instagram, YouTube, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok. We are on Spotify, Apple Pod, all if the there's Google a social pods. platform, he's on it. 
Like, yeah, every time I say this, even I the ones you one. haven't heard of, he's on. He told me one. Uh, we're on Facebook. Yeah, that one. Uh, that's the one I hadn't heard of. And we're at all of them on at Mike for Success. Also, follow my personal social at Michael Raiden on Instagram and everything else. Also, check out the YouTube travel channel that will be kicking on soon. And Justin will be joining for some cool content. Indeed. And Justin also is going to be launching his YouTube brand. And you can I follow am. him at all his socials. In. I'm diving back into the YouTube. I've got a couple hundred videos up. So if you guys want to go binge some old Justin Bishop videos, you can go there. But my Instagram is justinbishop.world. I'm on there every single day. I respond to DMs the questions hit me up with anything you got i will get to it any questions any life any anything and uh youtube link is on there and you know i would love for you to to come and be a part of my community it's something that i'm growing slowly but surely and um we spread nothing but positivity and awesome life <laughs> and if you have any questions feel free to dm me dm uh, justin we're friendly we look at each other as what we like to say small creators but even though you may look at us as bigger we like to answer because we were in your shoes at one yeah. point. I always like asking questions. I'll answer anything. So feel free to fire away. That's the one big thing that I think a lot of people get is being a small creator. You have the opportunity to, to interact with people like people like Sam and Colby. They have five million. I, I know that they don't see everyone. So take advantage of uh, it's going to sound bad, but take advantage of us while we're while we're small so that we can provide you more value because unfortunately there are only 24 hours in a day. True. And, and uh, if you have any artists or industries or any unique things, we got the network and friends that we could find someone to help you guys out and teach you something that you want to grow in. And that's yeah. what all this is about behind the scenes and not maybe the main, main people, but people behind the scenes that there's careers you can do like traveling with Sam and Colby and a bunch of other cool things. Yeah. <laughs> but thanks guys. This is another episode of Mike for success. And we're tuning out for the second time. Peace. <laughs> Justin, Same. This is called the Late Night Snack with Mike for Success, Michael Raiden. Uh, what is the late night snack, Justin, that you have when you are editing your software at 2 o'clock in the morning? Not too proud about this one, but uh, <laughs> my go-to snack is a lot of calories, a lot of chocolate, a lot of good. It's, uh, it's a bowl of ice cream, but it's not just a bowl of ice cream. On that bottom of ice cream, there's going to be a little bit of chocolate, chocolate chip <laughs> cookie dough. There's gonna be some ice cream on the top. And while while I'm scooping that ice cream, I've got two Oreo Pop-Tarts going in the toaster so they can heat up. And then when they come out of the toaster, you crumple them over the ice cream so you got some nice topping. And then you take a nice, nice big pour of chocolate syrup. And uh, that's that's my 2 a.m. late night snack. What's your Mario Ooh. character? Well, if we're playing uh, Mario Kart, Better. Baby Bowser is my go-to for that. I was about to say Luigi, come on, Luigi. Luigi is my go-to for, for all other Mario games, though, because he's got hops. He's the white boy that got hops. <laughs> but I, uh, I, I think Luigi is also an underdog and doesn't get as much appreciation as Mario should. He does all the same stuff, but everything is named after Mario. Like, it's just being the brother that got outshone, and so got to show the man some love. That is awesome. <laughs> and what is your little late night snack? Uh oh. Oh, am I am I your Where late are you? night Come snack? Come here, little buddy. Whoop. This hey. is Lexi, and Lexi's late night snack is dog food. I'm I'm also single, so if you want to be my late night snack, ladies, hit me up. There you go. And this is Mike for success with two dogs. <laughs> <laughs>